Okay, you can see I'm back. Um, another day. Anyway, I'm kind of set up to get ready stitching here. Um, I've got several means of getting this done. I've got one of these uh, um, lock stitch sewing awls. And, you know, I thought this was the, the thing when I got it. And I haven't quite mastered it. It's a... Uh, can't get my stitching as tight as I want with it so I'm gonna goof around with it and make it work but it's got a compartment in the back here that unscrews and it's got a little wrench um, you can store your needles in there these are needles for it and uh, kind of a good little good little setup if you need to have just one thing so but I'm not going to use that today. I've got an assortment of needles here, and I broke one of my leather stitching needles. And one thing I want to point out about what I've noticed with these needles is, is they're not necessarily sharp, you know. And uh, they're a good needle. I like working with them. So what I have over here is an assortment of needles that I have. These are actually um, yarn darning needles and say like for darning socks or something like that. Um, I don't have leather supplies readily available to me right where I'm at here so I'm making do with these and they seem to work just fine so a little more pointy yeah you can stick yourself pretty good with them so I'll show you a trick a little bit later to keep from doing that so uh, this is the thread that I use it's a pre-waxed pre um, thread and I believe this came from Tandy and I got some white and some black pre-waxed good stuff okay well I'm gonna thread these needles and uh, we'll get to stitching okay well I got my needles threaded and what I do is I just use one continuous piece of thread here and put a needle on each end of it and when I start stitching I'm going to start with the with the inner row here and when I start I always start on the second hole and and I kind of do what maybe I might call a back stitch so I get a double um, I get a double uh, row of stitches in this or uh, a double amount of thread in this very last um, stitch hole and so um, the other thing I thought of since Santa Claus is coming is I don't have a stitching horse a stitching horse is just a, a clamp that holds your work like this and it holds it steady so you can use both hands to stitch um, back and forth and back and forth or whatever kind of a stitch you're using so got that in there I'll snug it up then I'll go back through the holes just ahead of it again. And just continue my stitching back and forth in this manner. So uh, go through that loop. And pull it tight. Oh, and you just kind of have to baby it. Showing off my skills, aren't I? Okay. So, and I guess I'm not really having to do it right now, but what I mentioned about earlier, a little trick about when you're pushing a needle through um, a hole and, and it's tight, instead of pushing on the end of the needle with like your thumb or something like that, I watched a video one, one time with a a very good leather worker and he just put he take if this if the hole is tight he just pushes on the thread like this it's doubled over you grab it and you push like that so you're not because the end of this needle the the eye end of it you can shove that right into your finger or your thumb also so you want to be very careful when you're doing this and just back and forth and back and forth and 
It's time consuming, but like I said, I just use the tools I have, snug it up. So that's kind of what I got so far. I started on the second hole, backed up, went back forward, now I'm back to my single stitch. So let me work at this a bit and come back when we get some more progress. Okay, as you see here, I've completed this inner row of stitching and double stitch there, back stitch, I mean, all the way around. I've made it to my last hole, and then I'll just repeat it back down here. I'll just stitch back like so. And I want you to know that uh, choosing the length of thread that you need to uh, um, cut. I've never figured that out, so I just kind of err on the side of caution. I try to get plenty, and this was probably about an arm's length of th thread that I used. And I'm sure that somebody somewhere along the lines has uh, mentioned how to figure that out, but for some reason that's slipped me. So, man, I'm having a tough time getting that out. Let me get a pair of pliers, and okay, like I said, uh, that's the amount of thread I have left. You know, it's probably 14 inches long. So I had plenty, but thread's cheap, so it makes your project look better if you just have one continuous run. So now, all that we have to do is grab some little snips, snip it off both sides. And then all I do is just might snip that just a little bit closer. Burn it, melt it, then I give it a wipe. And that just kind of blunts that end over so it doesn't pull back through. And it didn't really make a mark or anything, so. As you can see on this side, I laid that, you know, I always got a project that's got a flaw. Well, must have laid that on something wet last night. Something made a little stain on it, but it's an axe sheath. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to repeat the process on this outside and uh, see what we got when we're done. Okay, as you see, I got this all finished up here and uh, I'm real pleased with my stitching. That's as probably as good a job as I've ever done and uh, learned a few things as I've been doing this. This time, um, in order for you to get your stitching just right, as you see this one, you know, it's kind of got, you know, some, they look, it makes the stitching look further apart and closer together and blah, 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 but what it is is it's the amount of tension that you pull on these you know, if you know these are all spaced evenly and it turns out looking like this, then I know what I did wrong. It took me a while to figure it out, but every time you pull on your, your thread at the end of each stitch, after you push your needles through, pull the same tension every time. Don't pull one hard and the next one easy and blah, blah, blah. Then your stitching ends up looking like this, a little sad. This, I'm very happy with. It uh, turned out just as I had hoped and uh, you know there's room for improvement but I'll get some more tools and get that stitching right and uh, <coughs> keep making some leather projects and so um, I guess the next thing to do is I need to work on getting this uh, this top hinged over and I learned this was like one of the first sheaths I made, head cover, whatever. I and it's made out of the exact same piece of leather. Um, this is leather that has been around my dad's house for many, many years, and he just never used it, and he gave it to me. But it's some, I think maybe even some tooling leather. I'm not sure. It's pretty thick. So, but I love it for the, this project. But when I just I just went ahead and I forced this over and. Uh, to put my snap in and then oiled it and over time it is formed to it but when I did that 
you probably can't see that but it cracked right here the first day that I did it so I think to make this leather more pliable and that not to happen there's a couple of things I could I could get a groover and I could groove the inside and it would relieve some of the thickness and help me out but I'll probably put it in some water and I'll form fit it to the axe bend it over locate the location of my snap put that in there so I think that's what I'm gonna do right or wrong that's what I'm doing alright it's coming around pretty pleased with it alright yeah let's get this thing wet well maybe you can see now I took this thing over and and uh, just run it under some warm tap water and soaked it up pretty good but you can see now this thing is quite pliable and it's not uh, looking like it's gonna give me any grief there in the fold and that you know of course that axe is quite broad across the top of it so it's gonna spread out and, but now that I got that I think I'll put it on the axe and I don't have anything to protect that. I was going to bring some plastic wrap with me, but let me see what I can come up with and get that form fitted. Okay, well I got a little bit of tape on the edge of this and a plastic bag over it, and I've got it folded over and where I've located where I want the snap. So I just take my awl and I punch through both layers of leather, mark the bottom one so I know where to locate the snap on both of them where it's going to work so that's done there let's get some snap stuff out and set this now. all right well I got my snap components here and got them all laid out um, little mini pin punch set this will punch the the hole for the the uh, rivet to come through where we peen it over and uh, so what I normally do, I just take a little sacrificial piece of leather here and lay it down in here so I don't punch a hole clear through everything and center this right over my mark there. And that looks to be pretty centered. Like I said, I use what I got. I didn't have a wooden mallet, so a little broken screwdriver threaded the end of it. Hickory shovel handle or something. Glued a little leather on it, and that's what I use so I don't damage my little punch drift here. Let's give it a sharp tap. And I do this kind of carefully so I don't go clear through stuff and ruin all the work I did so just starting to go through That sounds like it did it. Nope. <laughs> Jeez. Bear with me. Okay. okay, well, as you see, I got it. I got a nice clean hole right there. The plug is in this punch. And it just progresses right out. As you keep punching, they just spill right out here. So now it's time to do this one. So pretty much in the same manner. And I just take this and I make a little mark, make sure I'm centered. Looks pretty good. This one you don't have to be so careful. Just drive it through. Just like that. Okay. And the snaps will go in there. I'll get that set up and we'll Okay, set. well. This is what I'll put on this side. 
run that through the hole and this goes on there like this and I'll put that piece of leather back in there because I don't want to be damaging the profile of the back side of this the finished leather on the outside you see I have a towel down not really necessary but I just didn't want to scar things up so and this is the set here that will that will roll that shaft over that tubular inner part that will hold this snap on so sorry I don't know all the correct terminology for this I'm just new at it so learn as I go so same same thing starting to roll build something. I'm going to get back in. Okay, got that set. Time to put the other part of the snap in. Kind of the same principle. Now when we do this we use this little anvil and in fact it's uh, slightly concave to match the roundness of that snap so you don't damage that snap. And I think I'll put it right on this hard surface and and do that. It's the same thing. Um, I'm not going to bore you with it and let you listen to me pound away. So use the same little drift here, and it just uh, rolls that inner part over and locks that snap on there. So let me get that set, and I'll show you. Okay, completed. That's going to be fun. Okay, well, put that back on the axe and let it form on there. Okay, well, I got that on there and I must say I'm quite pleased with it. I'm really, really liking that. Well, I want to thank Mr. Killerman, a.k.a. Backwoods America, Backwoods America. Now, him and I share a common interest in its axes and a little bit of leather work, and he just put up a video where he did this double stitching like I mentioned earlier. I've seen it before, but you know what? He brought it to my attention right as I was getting ready to do this project, and it just sparked me to, to do this. So I'm very happy with it. And uh, I have him to thanks to thank for uh, reminding me to do this. So it's quite an improvement from that to this. So I can get this one back on my old friend here. It's kind of what I got going. Nice, nicer. Alright guys, well, hang on a minute and I'll show you that knife project before I get out of here. And that's what spilled actually, so I had that bottle of vinegar sitting there, of course. It spilled. Alright, be back in a moment. Okay, well, it's time for me to start cleaning up this mess and putting things back in order. So, that's what I ended up with that knife. And, uh, forced a patina on it. And, uh, like I said, I used it earlier this year to cut some chanterelle mushrooms and it had stained it pretty bad and so I cleaned it up and put a patina on it maybe that'll protect it but it's kinda got a gunmetal gray tint to it now I like it I like that knife I've been working on the edge a little bit like it needed it right huh just like they always do good little knife. Alright, well thanks for watching and
keep on bushcrafting. Over and out. Oh yeah, one more thing. Anytime anybody's seen this knife in one of my videos or something, I've been asked, where did I get the sheath for it? Well, you know, all it is, it's the original plastic sheath inside. And uh, all I did is took some light gauge leather that I had and dampened it and formed it over that. And uh, just kind of did a traditional little scandy thing, I think. But anyway, yeah, I just formed it over there. It's not glued on or anything. This is one of those projects where I used that um, lock stitch thing. I used that when I did this, and I was not really pleased with the stitching on it. I was unable to control the tension on it, and but practice, I'll get better, but it doesn't look bad. It's held up for, I don't know, a year maybe. Nah, not that. Yeah, pretty close. Anyway, that's all that is. Both my mores are like that. In fact, here's a larger one. Same, same. I'll probably force a patina on this one too. It's getting a little stained up. That one, I put a little dangler on it. This one I hand stitched and I, I'm much happier with the stitching on that. And I just bumped it out here, did a double stitch, took a piece of wire, bent me a little triangle and kind of how they do. Anyway, that's that, that's that. Okay, well, now it's goodbye. Over and out.